Well, I swapped a perfectly good less than one year old Skoda VRS for a six year old Tesla, which then failed its MOT. Was I mad to have made that decision? Uh, well, watch the film and find out and you can see why it failed and what's been done uh, and why it's taken so long to, to make the film. Hello and welcome to another edition of Our Wolf is Wheels. Uh, today we look at the 2018 Tesla Model S uh, P100D that I bought last September. Um, well, I took it for an MOT back in May. In fact, it was probably late April, maybe early May, I can't remember, um, for its MOT, which is the first one it's had under my stewardship, and it failed. And the day of recording this is about the 3rd or 4th of September, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and why has it taken so long to get itself sorted out? Well, it's a bit of a tale really, and it's not really failed for the reasons that you might have thought. But anyway, all is fixed now. Um, I'll tell you all about what's happened. Well, yeah, I took it uh, along to a garage uh, over fairly near to me, about 10, 15 miles away, and it was an HERVA approved garage, which means basically they specialise in the repair and service of electric vehicles. Um, and it struck me as a reasonable place to go. And I'd actually taken the motorhome there as well uh, a few days before. So I thought, yeah, I trust this garage, all will be well. However, it actually failed the MOT on two major points. Uh, the first one to talk about is in fact the uh, near side, the left hand side headlight. But before I do that, actually, I'll just add what an MOT is just in case you're um, watching this from abroad. Um, any vehicle, any car that's over th three years old or older has to annually go through, um, if you like a health check, a fitness check uh, at an approved garage uh, where they will actually issue a certificate to say yes this car at the time of testing is legal and roadworthy and is safe safe to use. Um, so it's I think they call it a WAF or a fitness out in the, the Antipodes, um, car grease maybe in France but it's that sort of thing it's just something that keeps uh, a car legal and usable on the road and so without an MOT the car can't be used. So um, obviously it's important to have the MOT and I was a little bit surprised slash sh shocked uh, and a bit disappointed that the car that I'd only owned since September 2023 come up for its first MOT during my custody and it failed and as I say it failed on two things one was a headlight and the second thing were tyres at the back. So let's talk about the headlight to start with. It actually failed not because of a very common problem which is the eyebrow at the top of the daytime running lights uh, failing. This car had already had the left hand headlight replaced as a result of that failure uh, but the beam was not adequate. Um, it was actually shining quite low on the ground as opposed to dazzling people. I guess that's why I wasn't really sure about it being a problem because I hadn't been being flashed but I'd always thought the lights were pretty useless but then this is the first Tesla Model S I've owned and it's obviously an older tech car and I thought well maybe that's just how the headlights are. However not the case, the, the left hand headlight was not doing all it should to illuminate the road in the correct manner. So that was a fail. Uh, the second thing it failed on was, and this was completely unknown to me um, and nothing to do with a Tesla issue, but the inside face of one of the rear tyres, uh, very hard to see unless you've got it on a ramp, I'd actually got a big cut out of it uh, right down to the cord. So it's probably from a pothole or something similar to that. Uh, and obviously I had no way of knowing about that realistically um, prior to the MOT. I mean, I looked at the tires, checked the depth, checked the outside edges, everything was fine, uh, but you can't get to see the inside edges without uh, getting the thing up in the air. So all this happened probably around about 10 days before we were due to go away in the motorhome and you may have seen the films of the European trip in the motorhome uh, where we went away for basically a month did about three and a half thousand miles uh, and the last thing I really needed just before I left to go to um, basically the Czech Republic, Hungary, places like that was a problem with the car so I had almost no time to try and get the thing sorted out before we went but we persevered 
when I got home and this was a Wednesday I was obviously a bit shell-shocked and disappointed quite honestly that the car hadn't passed the MOT um, and I needed therefore to source a couple of new tyres and also find out what is going on with the headlight system. Now let's talk about the headlight first. Um, to report an issue with a Tesla, although this one's out of warranty, you can still do this system, you go onto the app and you put a service request in. And with that service request, I said, yes, it's failed the MOT because of the uh, left hand slash near side headlight adjustment. Um, and I sent that off and that was probably about 12.30, I guess. And within half an hour, I'd got uh, a text back from Tesla saying, yeah, thanks for logging this. Uh, we will send a mobile ranger to your house to sort this out for you on Monday morning at nine o'clock. Now, this really impressed me um, because the Monday in question was actually the first May bank holiday. So they're actually using their mobile service on a bank holiday. So I thought, well, that's great. Yeah. OK, not too bad. Um, and the price that they quoted me to sort this out was £36, including VAT, which I thought was extremely reasonable. Um, so that was good. However, it went on a little bit further than that uh, because about an hour or so later, I got another message from Tesla that said, ah, actually in view of the uh, problem that you have, our mobile ranger is not going to be able to fix this. You're going to have to bring it into uh, the service center, which is about 12 miles from where I live. And as I'm reading this, my heart is sinking, thinking, oh, crikey, that's going to be weeks away because having had cars in the past, and in particular, extremely unreliable Jaguar Land Rover products that spent more time in the um, workshop than they did being used, you could never get in, even though it was a problem with their car that, that they created. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. The point is, as I'm reading this, I was thinking the worst. However, uh, what they actually went on to say is, so if you can get here for 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, the Thursday, then um, we can fix the car for you while you wait. And by the way, the cost is £36. So that was really, really good service. I was really impressed with that. So uh, I toddled off the next day at nine o'clock to Tesla uh, and they looked at the headlight and I think they thought it was going to be a fairly quick fix. Uh, but it actually took them two hours from when they put it into the workshop to the car being returned. Uh, the reason is that I think they thought it was a simple headlight adjustment um, situation, which you actually do through the screen. Uh, you have to go into the service menu, blah, blah, blah. But it's all doable just on, on the thing and it makes the lights go up and down and in and out and, and what have you. However, um, that wasn't the case in this situation. And what had happened is that the adjuster um, which you can see circled on the um, little inset thing, which is probably appearing about here or here. I don't know where I'm going to put it yet. Uh, but that, uh, it's like a ball and socket thing, but the ball had come out, so it didn't matter how much they were trying to adjust it from the software, the light simply wasn't moving and it had just dropped down. So it took them a bit longer than they planned to, to find that, but they put it all back together, £36 later, and the headlight is sorted. So while I was waiting on the Wednesday afternoon to um, sort the headlight out, as I say, on the Thursday, I'd also investigated the cost of some tyres. And I ended up going on to Black Circles, um, no affiliation here with Black Circles. Again, I was expecting the worst for two reasons. Is One, um, you read everywhere, say everywhere, not on Tesla things, but just in the general press, that you can't get tires for Teslas. They have to be a special tire, they have to be this, they have to be that. And as a consequence, I thought too, they're gonna to be very expensive. Um, now, technically, I only really needed to replace one because it was only one that had the, uh, the cut. But when you think about the car, it puts out in excess of 700 brake horsepower. Um, and I just wasn't really happy to have uh, two tyres, you know, one new tyre and one older tyre on the same axle. Um, so maybe just a bit of overkill, but I actually bought two new tyres. Um, so I got them from Black Circles um, and they could be fitted at my house on the Tuesday of the following week or 
I could take it to a local uh, tire fitting depot and they could do it at nine, uh, 8 30 actually, not 9 o'clock, 8 30 on Friday morning. So this is the Wednesday um, and the tires will be delivered to that particular tire place, tire depot, uh, in time for me to take the car there at 8 30 on a Friday morning. Um, and the cost of those for the pair of tires fitted was just over 550 pounds which i thought was actually pretty good i mean the tires on this car are 265 35 21 so the 21 inch wheels um very very uh, low profile and, and, and pretty wide i mean anyway so mot fail wednesday i'm getting the headlight fixed on the thursday the tires fitted on the friday and i can get it retested the following week um, on the Wednesday, uh, which I had kind of arranged for it to be done on the basis of it gave us, because it's a bank holiday Monday, don't forget, and the Tuesday I thought, well, just in case something goes wrong, it does build another day into the uh, situation. So I was able to take it back for another MOT on the Wednesday. So why did it take so long? Well, this is where the story gets a little bit uh, interesting. Now, this particular car, um, like all, I think, P100Ds, is fitted with air suspension. And as a consequence, you have to be very careful when you're jacking the car up. You actually have to put it into jack mode, um, which you do through the screen, as you can see just in this little uh, next sequence of clips. So to enter into jack mode, you push the um, car icon there and it brings up the, the big screen. Uh, you then come down here to where it says service and then you just push this one here that says jack mode uh, we we'll push it now there you go jack mode on jack mode off easy as that and um, that then stops the uh, suspension trying to pump itself up to, to so the tires are still in, in contact with the road so in other words the if you jack the car up with it not being in jack mode the uh, compressor will run so that it's trying to keep the, the tires in contact so you have to put it into jack mode and then it knows ah yes i'm going to be jacked up and i won't bother to to turn on the compressor and ultimately if you do not put it in jack mode and jack the car up you can do quite a lot of and expensive damage to the suspension so what went wrong okay so i took the car along to the the tire depot uh, and got on like a house on fire with the chap there he's a very much a car enthusiast he, he runs a highly tuned mx5 he does track days with it great great guy um and i'm chatting away to him um while the uh, guys were getting on with the job and as we were talking one of the chaps came in looking a bit sheepish and said um boss i'm really sorry i i think we've damaged his car now at this point bearing in mind the jack mode which i'd already talked through with them i thought oh god this is going to be an absolute catastrophe uh you know they've, they've either put a, a jack through the battery or they've not used jack mode or whatever whatever you know your mind is racing um so he went off and, and came back and what had actually happened was despite all the cameras and all of the technology on the car they'd managed to drive it into the side of the ramp uh, and as you can see in the uh, stills that are sort of being overlaid here, uh, they scrape the front bumper. Now, probably the thing that surprised me most of all of this was that I actually didn't lose my rag. Uh, the guy had obviously done it not on purpose. They put their hands up to it and said, look, you know, we've, we've damaged the car. It wasn't a case of, oh, it was already like it when it came in, sir. Nothing like that. Um, and I'm not going to name the garage at all. Um, because they were really, really good about the whole thing. Um, they fitted the tyres and they said, right, what you need to do is you need to go and source someone who will fix the car and we will pay the bill. No quibbles, no question. OK, it was their fault, but as I say, you don't necessarily get that all the time in, in the modern world. Um, and realistically, that's really what took so long to get fixed. So... By sort of lunchtime on, on Friday, I had a car that failed its MOT on the Wednesday. Tesla had sorted the light out on the Thursday. 
black circles had sorted the tyres out on the Friday and I could in theory have had the car re-MOT'd uh, on the Friday uh, but I just didn't. As I said we were going away and I really didn't need all this aggravation. So to to cap it off with a uh, a scrape on the front of the car was just I just didn't need it. But I did explain that we were going away and we wouldn't be able to do anything about it for some time. Um, and as it turned out it was not until because of holidays, family illnesses uh, and other commitments I couldn't actually get it down to the uh, body shop that I'd chosen to use until um, sort of basically the back end of August uh, and I used Bingley Car Body Shops and I'll put a link to their um, website in, in the description below uh, as well as across sort of here um, and again I've got no affiliation with them but they did do an absolutely smashing job um, as you can see here in the before and after photos uh, and I'd have absolutely no hesitation in using that firm again um, and again you know the guys in the uh, tyre depot sort of said well just get it fixed blah 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 and you read everywhere but oh well, people won't work on a Tesla people won't do this I won't do that the guys up at, at the Bingley body shop not a problem of course we can fix it um, you know how long will you want it for we'll bring it in at nine in the morning pick it up at half four in the afternoon we'll, no, so we won't need to jack it up um, and uh, it's all sorted. Uh, I'll just add in here that yes, the uh, tire depot did pay the bill in full without any quibble. I took them the estimate, um, which they said, yeah, fine, it is what it is. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't have to pay and reclaim it. They just sorted it out. Um, I literally took the car down, had it repaired. Um, the garage body shop had spoken with the tire place and they'd agreed what they had agreed. Um, and, uh, it just wasn't an issue for me uh, the only thing it really took me was a bit of time because obviously I had to go up and get an estimate which I then had to take to the tyre depot and then I had to organise my time to take the car in um, and that was it but yeah so yeah as I say the tyre place I'm not going to name and shame they don't deserve shaming um, they reacted magnificently through it um, and all is good so that really is the tale of the Tesla Model S MOT failure why it failed cost me 36 pounds with tesla to get the light fixed cost me 550 quid to have the uh, tires sorted um, and it just took so long to actually get the whole thing done uh, basically because of my fault um, and uh, that that's it really anyway i i know it's just a bit rambling um i just wanted to put it all down uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching. If you managed to get this far, um, you deserve a medal. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, if you'd like to give it a thumbs up, obviously you can feel free to subscribe. Um, this is a non-profit making channel. I actually make zero out of the, the channel. I don't want it monetized. So I don't get anything whether you do or don't subscribe. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything. It just makes the films a bit easier to find for other people. Uh, so if you liked it, as I say, give it a thumbs up, think about subscribing, share it, tell your mates, do what you like. Um, and in the meantime, that's it for now. And I look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Our Wolf is Wheels. Uh, bye. <laughs>